You're out of your mind if you think that's going to be a thing. No way. <laughs> now, we do see Hip on the Reyna. We've, we've got a raise in play as well on both sides. So interesting that Hip doesn't play that despite playing it oh so well on Bind to start things off. David P will be the first one to make contact with the Ghost, has to fall back, throws down that slow orb to keep the push back just a bit. Mixwell as the Jet, offering a bit of assistance and support towards mid. Already a frag here for David P. And a great start. The unsigned G2 member, David P, now going to be the first contact point once they start to funnel in. That Cypher Cage likely not going to last long, but it's the dark cover that'll give David P a little bit more space. Now that he hears some of those ropes come up and down. Oh, David P, so close! And it's just the swing from Firoth. He will take out David P, and this might open up the push towards A, but already the defense, they're in place. You do have Mixwell over towards Elbow and Petit Tech back sight. We'll spot them as they fall off. Heaven the Wall comes through just in time as Lucker fell instantaneously with the wall going up. It does come down to a two on two. Spike will get across onto the site. I like the move coming in from Korea. Using that port to get into position. Goes for the fight. It's going on for way too long with four HP. He decides to go back and stick the spike. He'll be down to the one on one with a dart in his stomach trying to move. Wants to just keep it there, and Pitt's going to end up winning that 1v1 in the end. It will be G2 who start off with the pistol round win. <laughs> I feel like Pith was a little confused there. He's like, wait, do I defuse it? Like, what What? Do, what do I do here? So, um, of course, G2 going to win that first round. Important for them to do so. Uh, NIP, very unfortunate for them. It was quite close there, but we'll see if they decide to force up and... That prediction is already starting to come to fruition. Stingers online, but will the rest of the team follow suit? Yes, they will. So they want to keep things competitive from the jump. So expect this round to be close. And if NIP are able to, to push this one forward, um, that'll make the economy a battle of the force ups. And we saw that earlier today. It didn't work out uh, quite well for one team, but that's always going to be the case regardless. So we'll see how NIP are able to force the issue here. Towards this A site they go, the flash comes out, and that'll give Petit Tech time to get at least a couple of kills before being traded out by Lucker, who gets dropped by a shot to the back of the skull from the pistol of Mixwell. Mixwell's still in position in heaven with the SMG. Site again lost. So a spike plant coming out from NIP. And let's see what they can do in this post plant scenario. They do have SMGs, so this was a force round coming in from NIP. And the force has not worked out too well for them thus far. But the double peak, net success, the Stinger and the Spectre go for the swing. And Mixwell taken out of the play for the time being. Oh. Nice pink shot coming out as well from the SMG. The boom bot's going to give away the position of one coming towards elbow. The difficult part is how do they handle this? There's a swing just a bit too wide, and now it's down to the one-on-one. -on -one. Does Firoth read this position of the Cypher up in heaven? And, oh, I think he disconnected. We haven't seen Petit Tech move. It's not even... The cipher, it's a what is going on? Okay, it oh, is. It was just a bug. DC. It's the, the UI. It's a DC coming in from Pit. I was gonna say, it says oh. Petit Tech in the corner, but it's actually Pit as the cipher. It's getting screwed up because he disconnected. He's back, but he's only there just in time to watch the spike detonate. So unfortunate. And NIP get a little bit lucky there in the second round. Internet, please. Yeah, I uh that is that is very sad to see. I even think I saw artists tweet out earlier today saying it was going to be six thousand dollars to upgrade his internet um i think they what? actually have to like i think they actually they have to actually build the lines and stuff and so um <laughs> that's a lot of money to get an upgrade on internet um so unfortunate for g2 of course i'm sure they'd prefer to play you know uh in the comfort of their own homes but not everyone has the highest level of internet Especially depending on where you're from. In Canada, our internet sucks. It is difficult to get like a fiber line. Um, whereas in the States, it might be a little bit easier. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is in Europe. Maybe some from chat can, can share what their internet feels, looks like, is. I'm not quite sure. But uh, hopefully they're able to get it fixed and uh, Pith will be able to play once again. You know, I, a lot of my friends have fiber internet and I'm always jealous. It's not available in my area and it likely never will be. Uh, so that's pretty frustrating considering businesses can get it in my area, but it's not run for residents. 
if I want to get gigabit, it costs me $196 a month. Yo. And if I go to two gigabit, it's 350 bucks per month with a $500 setup fee. So oh can relate. It's not like I'm in the sticks. I'm not. I'm an hour away from Philadelphia, two hours from New York City. I'm in a suburban area. It's not like I'm in the middle of like Eastern Bumble in North Dakota. Like, come on, ISPs, please. To be fair, one of my close friends, he lives in uh, somewhere in British Columbia. I don't know exactly where, but he lives in like a town of like maybe sub 100,000. And he's got a, a fiber line that is under $100. And I'm like, how do you have that? You do not live in an area that is highly populated, and your internet is nuts. So, listen, I, I'm not an internet guy. I, I have no idea what these companies are doing, where these lines are going, but I, Bach, Bach, I feel you. It's rough out here. I mean, we saw problems plague artists when we covered the G2 European Brawl, the second one. Yeah. And he actually had to get substituted out. I think it was uh, Xiao who came in and replaced him and played well, but it was disappointing because he obviously wanted to see artists play. Uh, that was just prior to being signed by G2. We'll take a look over at the bike shop. Maybe that's what we'll see utilized here to ride his PC over to somebody else's house where the internet isn't going to be a problem. Um, how does G2 adjust? Like, David P's got some cash. So does the rest of the team. And it is SMGs for the most part coming in from NIP. I could mm -hmm. find value in a force buy here. Uh, if I was G2, I would actually consider it. I would consider putting in SMGs. But at the same point in time, it's like, do you really want to and give that away? You can see it being decided upon. The Phantom comes out for David P. I, I like this play coming out from G2. I think this makes perfect sense. The Judge, the Phantom, the SMGs. Uh, Artis is obviously only on a pistol, but there's Stingers still in play. Spectres, a Bulldog. There's only one rifle actually coming in, and that's in Kriya's hands. So this could definitely turn around. And you've got Mixwell playing the Judge Jetty meta. We've talked about how powerful Judge can be, and we see it even worse when it's in the hands of a Jet. So there's a very strong reality yeah. and possibility that Mixwell could punish with the shotgun. Yeah, I, I wonder if part of this technical pause may also include um, asking what the ruling may be on something like that. You know, a DC, it's very unfortunate. You know, I wonder if G2 had, if they were able to, to know that something was wrong, I wonder if they would have tech paused in the middle of a round, but difficult to say. But looking at the round at hand, Mixwell makes it relatively expensive as he will find one for the round but that judge already out of play mixwell actually he finds one but wait sorry i think we're looking at a different perspective my apologies but tidek is the one that's sitting there in the corner and he'll find hip a couple of shots from the opposition looking to try to take him out as he pushes forward rhyme and Korea will continue that gunfight as artist the last member was the last member standing it is now once again pith Gonna be pushing in through the defender spawn. Hopefully the issues don't plague him again. And Kriya can get that spike down. And that'll be likely another round for NIP. But this time, I think a rightfully earned round for the attack. It's down to one. It's Pith. The Cypher. Working through from heaven, there's a target to his left. Oh, it's basically a free kill onto Korea, but does he anticipate Rhyme on the backside of the play? Starts to peek towards heaven, good damage being dealt. All he has to do is just wait this one out, and you can see how Rhyme is playing it. The camera's gonna go down, it's a bait cam. Nice. I like the play from Rhyme. Something you always love to see, you'll see it played by Sova's with the recon dart, and you see it here. Doesn't actually land on the Phantom, so the rifle won't come into the next round, but it's an expensive round for both teams. And now you're asking yourself, do we force again? Because there's <laughs> money here, and it's like, oh, well, maybe we spend a little bit of this cash, because their cash is also not so great. It is better than the opposite side, so at least they have that going for them. But, you know, now uh, G2, they'll have 2,400 that are flowing through their veins. If they lose another, it'll be 2,900, so... Um, smart to go for the eco here. I don't think you force up. You want to get that 2,900, or at least, I mean, you want the 3,000 to win the round, of course, but uh, you don't want to overspend so that in the following round, you'll have whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. And plus, not to mention, 
you've got two great ultimates to use on the eco. You've got the showstopper, you have the blade storm. That can really hurt, and it doesn't really cost you anything other than some ult points, which you're going to be getting throughout the game anyways. So um, that might be the general idea here or the general consensus. We are seeing a showstopper of their own. Firoth, though, he'll be taken out by the blade storm. A uh, quick trade of kills, though, and Mixwell hunting, trying to hunt down that weapon. But it's been the A push all along for NIP. They've got full control. Korea getting up on top of the balcony with the port. You've got the jet coming through with the ult, the blade storm. There's the peak coming out from David B, who has to go for the self heal. He'll start backing off and allow Mixwell to be the one that leads in first. Ugh, the leer proving to be a bit problematic while that ult pop don't waste a blade on the leer. As they go for the peak, Rhymes there st sitting on the other side of ropes, so the round goes the way of NIP, and it all falls onto David P himself. So his heroics in the last map not going to necessarily make a difference here as NIP has found the first three, and this is on the attacking side of split, which is huge. Oh. Dust. <laughs> I like the patience from David P. Fortunately for the attack they're able to lay on some rounds and quite honestly i just have a feeling that this is going to be a very attacker sided matchup um yes it is obviously the eco for g2 yes unfortunately pith disconnected but i i i feel like nip are going to find more more find more rounds than you think that they are of course split statistically can be a defender sided map but we've seen before how Certain teams can make this feel like an attacker sided map. So we'll see how Nip continue to play it. So far, uh, it's been difficult for G2 considering some of the unfortunate circumstances that have plagued them. But now they've got weapons. Now they can be a part of the conversation. And we'll see what that conversation ends up looking like for G2. An un... Unknown, nah, I wouldn't say unknown, a misunderstood side effect of that slow orb being that it affects your jumping height. A lot of people don't even really realize that until it happens to them sometimes. So they throw out that slow orb in mid, and as they try to jump up onto the barrels, they can't quite get high enough to get up there. So it slows things down just a little bit, even more so than you might anticipate, because it's not like you can just jump up and continue walking forward. So you've got David P in heaven, you've got the Cypher Pit in the sight. Mixwell was there, but he started to rotate out of position, and they're going to start moving in. So there's the smoke going down, dark cover coming out. Korea gets tagged by the camera, going to go ahead and remove that dart. The rotate not coming through just yet. The Sage is starting to rotate off of Heaven after putting the wall down. They're going to start making their way out onto the site, and now you can see Mixwell coming into position. The slow orb on spawn puts everything on Pith, who's on the site. Hit by the satchel doesn't seem to make too much of a difference for him initially. It'll come down to a two on three, and yikes. This is scary if you're on the side of G2. Empress popped by hip. So the two on three going to be backed up by the ult. The spike going to be planted with just a few seconds left on the clock around 10. Mixwell's holding the line of sight, and that did not work out so well for them at all. You thought maybe that hip's ult would work out for them, but they end up surviving with four after the res comes through from David P. And even if this does end up being a defender-sided affair... Um, bare minimum, NIP were able to put on three rounds. One, unfortunate for G2, but the other two um, really came in. And now their economy is going to start to falter. So um, the force up here, of course, for the attack, but in the rounds to follow, likely won't have enough credits to um, continue to keep fighting against G2. So G2 have a window of opportunity, um, and that window of opportunity can be quite easy if the holds come through. So, so far... NIP haven't really played towards the middle and a stark difference than what we saw up against uh, the previous best of three. The boost here predicted by Mixwell looking for maybe the peak forward Lucker though not really having any of it but the dark cover might give them some safety but so far it's just the boom bot that is going to be journeying down. There's the ult popped by the Rays, that's the showstopper coming out. The Rocket, will it make a difference? No, not going to be the case. So it's sent down into the sewers. All it does is flush them down that drain. As they try to escape the damage that could have been coming their way, they're just going to move right on back into position, shuffling back up towards lower mid. 
David P. has to be careful as there's quite a bit of bodies built up on the other side of that dark cover. So as it fades, a peek here would not be wise from the Sage. But David P. has been really good in a lot of these 1v many scenarios. The Rocket or the Nade going to go up in towards Heaven. That'll push him out of position. Dark cover coming in to try to support both. Dark cover is coming down on ropes and one on Heaven from the defense. But again, they go back through the sewers and it looks like they're going to be going towards this A site where you've got Mixwell up high and you've got Kriya here as well. Oh, Mixwell, unfortunately, shot Tidek, there. Yeah, but Patidek, he's going to be there. The first contact point through the smoke, Mixwell and Patidek. They'll join forces. And that last and final player, Rhyme. I like the read from him earlier on. It was David P that jumped down below into ropes and... I believe Rhyme heard it, so he got into position, hoping that that A push was going to work out. Unfortunately, though, um, they just walked straight through the smoke and met their demise. So now it'll be down to the pistols for them. G2 looking at another round on the board, and they're going to hopefully grab on to their first round lead of this map. Chat, you got to stop misbehaving. Getting put in emote only mode. Come on now. Can't we just be nice to each other? Ketchup chips? Let's let's be nice to each other. And if you guys have a problem with being nice to each other, you can tag me in chat. My name is MitchManCasting, at MitchManCasting. Just tag me, spam me with <laughs> comments about me. Trust me, it's fine. There's the take on towards the A site. The shot's not where they need to be from Mixwell. Looked like maybe we'd see them crush this push, but it doesn't end up working out so well. The nade up into heaven. Going to do a little bit of damage to artists who just can't quite escape the detonation radius. Spike's been planted on the A site in the meantime. Exactly Retake coming through. David P coming up from ramp. There's the neural theft being popped. David P right around the corner has a target. It's going to send out that slow orb towards the site. Artist gets one. Spamming the sign is David P. Doesn't realize how on the money he was with that spam. It all falls down to the last man standing, and Rhyme can't do much. So NIP may have had a flurry of rounds in the beginning, but G2 is starting to build up to a blizzard as they've now found four and they're looking to continue in similar fashion. I think that was the pistol there for Nip too, so at least they were able to find two, um, which is not too bad, uh, considering the circumstance. They'll force up here weapons online for them, uh, but we're not too far away, just post halfway point of this half. And so far, Nip just trying to force their way through onto the sites. The spikes, sometimes they go down, but... Uh, for the side of G2, they've done a great job of holding. And I don't really think it's any, been anything special with utility. I just think they've got these great angles set up. And once the attack pushes in, um, I, have, like, I feel like they're just pushing in blindly. Like, they're not using the Leer. They're not using the Paranoia. And, and I maybe think they need to start using some of that utility when they push in. Informational ult there by Petit Tech as the Omen. Kriya's on the site right now, and uh, as the dark cover fades, he's got targets on both sides. Good luck dealing with that one. Oh, this is going to be awkward. The rocket doesn't even get sent, and that's a big problem. That's the spike being dropped now in B main. Now, David P uses the wall to the best of his ability to delay the ability of NIP from scooping that spike back up. But obviously, they're going to start chiseling away at that ice as fast as they can. As I say that, though, Mixwell has arrived with some backup here. The operator shot. It fires true. It's now down on two. It'll be the Cypher and the Reina of NIP. Rhyme and Hip trying to get that spike secured on the B site. They've got three players playing defense on the other side. David B has run completely away from this site. He's gone the exact opposite direction, running all the way over towards A. Gets caught in a tripwire over on the A site. What is happening? But T-Tech is going to have to watch this, but it's working out nicely. David P has actually read this so incredibly well. He's going to get in position. Phantom in his hand. Here's the Stampede and the Wildebeest. They'll swing around the corner and it's two headshots for David P. And a couple of turbo dunks going over towards the attack. Having a quick look at the replay. A great swing there from Firoth. But, oof. Rough stuff. And as the rest of the frags come through, it's David P in a, in a master class of positioning. Finding himself just in the most perfect position in the nick of time. Netting G2 the round. A two-round lead now for the defense, and the attack back down to the pistol. Potentially gives us another round for G2, so starting to really become a little bit difficult for, uh, for Nip to keep up.
Nades going down here. Art is stuck behind this box, though, and he needs to get out. So they use the wall. David P is on top of said wall. Try and make it work. Won't Look be the case. Utility. So much utility in mid, and, and it's like a standstill. Guys, I was only kidding. Don't be nice to Mitch. He's a nice guy. David P with the peak. Gonna find two. The off peak from Mixwell. He actually connects with the operator as the smoke lands. It's down to now just one. It's Lucker with the Sheriff. It's not exactly the greatest round coming in from NIP. There. From both the way they performed and what they brought into it, economically speaking. But G2 has doubled up the lead. So they win the pistol. They lose that second round to the four spy. And then we saw what happened you know, with the disconnects that may have resulted in that. They find a string of three rounds, but it's been all G2 since then. Five straight rounds, and honestly, it doesn't show any signs of slowing. At least NIP found those three rounds, right? Had they not found those three rounds, this first half would probably look a whole lot worse. You kind of wonder, going back to that 1v1 scenario where uh, Pitt's internet kicks out, do they win that in that 1v1? I mean, it was a 2v1 at one point, or even a 3v1, and he just wasn't moving. Lucker, Ooh. early on with the shot, though, to take out David P. That's a big kill. Oh, unfortunate for Lucker. Here comes Mixwell looking for that peak. The Battle of the Ops, but Lucker might be the one that uh, gets the better of Mixwell here. Down to 23, just chips him ever so slightly with the penetration. Smoke going down toward ropes allows NIP to play a little bit more forward, but it's Artis on the opposite side. Going to throw some of those paint shells out. And now NIP going to be backing away. Pith playing very aggressively. Doesn't know that on the other side there's two, and now trying to escape it's Korea with the Spectre. They'll just find frag after frag and the res as well. Mixwell on the opposite side. He's going to be flashed once more and backs away thinking that it'll be a heavy push towards the B site. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. They'll make their way through mid and start to go towards ropes. I think they'll hear this as they'll start to really funnel through, making a lot of noise pushing up. Paranoia from the side of Patidek will actually dissuade them and discourage them to go back the way around. I feel like I'm watching a match of PUBG as the rotates come one after another. Eventually, they'll get that spike down and Mixuo will be the first point of contact pushing forward. Promising take coming in from NIP. Looking to grab their fourth round. Mixwell trying to prevent that from being a reality. Mixwell has not only the operator to fall back on, but he also has his ult available. The T Tech takes out one up in heaven. Ooh, dangerously close to dispatching of the Sage, a self heal coming in from Lucker, who's on that operator role. Mixwell on 23 HP, probably trying to just get out of this at this point. Going to be going back towards heaven. Lucker's right around the corner. Who wins the fight? It's going to be Lucker. So there's that op duel between Mixwell and Lucker working out for NIP. Four rounds on the board for them. The money coming in from NIP should be good enough based on the way they've been winning these last couple of rounds. So we should see that full buy, including the operator purchase. But we'll see if that ends up being the case. Yeah, there you go. So Mixwell will have the op as we expected. So if... This is a weird place to be in right now because uh, G2, they of course have credits to spend, but obviously they didn't get a whole lot after that loss. And so I, I, I seriously wonder um, if NIP are able to close this one out. What the what the economy really looks like in that last and final round. It might be a little tricky, um, but the round of hand, Fifth pushes up through the garage and he'll find a couple of members up to no good, but he'll get out of that neighborhood quite quickly. And now the rest of the attack, just going to re-strategize we think, but Having a look at the round ahead, um, a lot of ultimates available. Firoth just trying to find one more kill to give himself the Showstopper. But on the opposite side, Bladestorm, Showstopper, Neural Theft, Resurrection. They've got a lot of tools on their tool belt to make things very difficult for G2. So Kriya going to spot out the back of sight and actually commit to the plant there. And you'll find Patidic still going to be an opportunity for Artis to send that Showstopper in. But he repositions great there from Kriya. But Pith will still find himself... A frag as he exactly swing that corner. Firoth with one, and the action just keeps on coming. But now, here comes the push from NIP. NIP stalled up currently in B. Fire in the hole. If they were to go towards this B site, there'd only be the Cypher here. It's Pith who's trying to get away from that Showstopper ult. Times it well. Exactly Able to drop the Sage as they come around the corner. This rocket, is it going to do damage? No, it's actually going to be Rhyme who makes quick work of Mixwell. David P now has to be in that hero position 
We've seen him have to do this before. He's been in that hero role in the past. Yeah, but he's got to deal with Rhyme here. And uh, yeah, that's how that goes. David P, he checks the 50, um, but he kind of overchecks. Like, Rhyme was already in a new position. Um, and when you kind of train yourself to think, okay, he's going to be in that 50 corner. Um, goes here. He technically was, and he technically wasn't at the same time. So now looking actually at, at the at the round ahead, uh, I did kind of foresee this a little bit. Artist not really having enough to buy, but David P will lend him a couple of credits. Hopefully that loan no. comes back uh, with interest um, in the rounds to come. But NIP, they've kept it close. They've kept it close. This could be a 6-6 six, six half uh, if they play their cards right here. The boom bot gets taken out quickly in mid. It was looking really good for G2 for a while, but NIP managed to find something there and pick up a few more rounds outside of that first little push of rounds we saw early in this first half. Even if they don't close things out here with a win and make it 6-6, six, six, it's already a successful half for a map like Split, which is incredibly defense-sided, the most defensive-sided map in the current rotation. Cybercage goes down, the wall's gonna come through. They're going to start spraying away at it. Artis is even going to chuck a nade out. There's so much going on. You can't quite tell where he's even at. As he's actually over in the B site, sending nades down in towards B main. Stuck inside that dark cover, just chilling, spraying away towards B main. Artis needs a heal from David P. The attack now on the other side of that wall that's been put up in mid. And there's a hole in it currently. Waiting for that ice to just fade a little bit more. Nice, nice shot from Lucker. As the ice drops, a quick flick comes in from the operator. And again, we see Lucker come out on top of the duel with Mixwell. Fifth now going to be the first line of contact. As you'll see them rushing in, but they see him first. Hip and Kriya will open up this B site. And now it's just down to David P and Patidic. They're trying to rush in, try to stop this push forward. The resurrection onto Pith will put him back into the mix. And they'll find Kriya as well. But it's still the 4v3 and an Empress on the opposite side. The blast pack lands right to their toesies. Lucker will take out David P. Still two remaining now for G2. But that operator is just way too strong. One more peek will kind of be the money here. But there's just not much pith I feel like he can do. Fear out swings. A 6-6 six, six half. We talk about a defender side, but I have a feeling that these two teams, they've got some split attack strategies. And let's see what G2s are in this second half. NIP looking great towards the tail end. Again, it was really a G2 run for a while as they just chained round after round in a row. Now, we do have a pause coming in here to start the second half. Not really sure what the issue is. Looks like it might be... Oh, it's a tactical pause. So it's a timeout being called. I say that as I see a couple of players motionless currently, which is always a little bit of a concern based on what happened early on in that first half that resulted in a round definitely being affected. Not much you can do about it, obviously. It's the nature of matches. In Counter-Strike, there was a rule for a long time. I know you were talking about, like, live rounds. What do you do? As long as damage was dealt, that's it's live. Like, that's that's the way it works. And there's been some heated debates back and forth about some sp particular incidences uh, that have occurred throughout the years. The one that stands out always is LG versus Team Liquid at the RGM Pro Series when a cameraman accidentally shut off a PC of fur. Yeah. So it was live round. Like, eight damage got dealt from a nade. And Liquid had no obligation to let them replay, and thus didn't. Uh, I remember it was a yeah. big deal because it wasn't like the game crashed or the PC crashed. The photographer literally leaned on the power cord or leaned on the power switch and shut the computer off. Not exactly a fun day as I was at that event helping do admin work and casting. Uh, <laughs> but the pause does come undone, so hopefully it was just tactical indeed and not a technical problem as we find ourselves here moving into the second half. This final round was... Just all luckers. I mean, the shots just continued to come out from that operator. Yeah, Fear of, of course, finding that last one. But already, we got to put that on pause as G2 are hungry. Pushing five towards the site. Fear trying to reposition behind the box. So far, no frags coming his way yet. He may be taken out here as they'll just swarm him. They will have a paranoia of their own hip hole. Take out David P. And now it is the 4v4 retaken. Unfortunately, late to the party is NIP, and they got to make sure that they get the job done right. They're going to start to divide and conquer. Two from heaven, while two go down the ramp side. And there is a tripwire there to make sure that they get identified once they push in. 
but a lot of members of G2 in that back of sight. Luck are gonna start to push forward. Those shots aren't going to connect. It's the dark cover that'll make it a little bit more difficult, but Pip, he gets athletic and he'll get dealt with immediately. Hip now trying to push with the 2v3 situation. Artist will make it a 3v1. And now all down to hip. The frenzies are just too difficult to deal with. Somehow Artist <laughs> will take himself out of the conversation. Uh, but it's a round one here for G2. Does that count towards the kill total for the round? I mean, <laughs> maybe technically. I don't know. Does he get a kill and a death? Um, that's that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, we'll have to go to the, uh, you know, up into a, a custom game. Check it out. Have a look. I mean, oh. you're you're what? Like Iron 3? I figure that's happened a lot in your games. Okay. All right. Okay. Listen, Got I, don't play, I don't play I'm many games. I'm going after games. everyone today. <laughs> I'm not Iron. I'm not Iron. I'm Gold 2. Um, I don't play a lot of Ranked when I do. Listen, we'll play together. I'll, uh, we'll, no I'll care. No, 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 no. I, I need to solo queue. I need to do it the slasher way. You know, I got to climb. I got to try to make it. And listen, they just fired the guy who made the last rank system. Maybe they'll make a new one. Maybe they'll change the way you rank up. Who knows? 7-6. As it's G2... Not looking for a rank up, but for looking for a leg up in this second half. They win the pistol, and they want to get this one in there as well. NIP with a nice little comeback towards the tail end. Prevented it from tail spinning just a bit. They're going to be going over towards this B site. It's completely vacant. Uh, the B site is... There's no one there. They stacked everyone over on A. It's an understandable play. But at this point, they're realizing, well, this didn't work. So now what do we do? It's interesting to see how teams adjust in this scenario. We've seen numerous times how teams go for these stacks and then just decide to do what they're doing right now, which is, again, just a stack, yeah. hoping that maybe they'll go on the hunt and come looking for you and that you're just going to be in a position to just obliterate them with unexpected pistols and shotguns. It'll be Pith that is the closest in proximity in the side of... NIP, they won't find one. Instead, it'll be G2 that finds them. And now as they prepare their campsite, hopefully the beans are out. The campfire is stoked, but Pith, he pokes the bear, and he'll find out what the bear is capable of doing. Pith will find two, pads his stats a little bit, and it's two rounds here now for G2. But NIP, this is their gun round. This is where they can really start to get rounds back into their favor. It's not really too far off it's just a two round differential if they get this round it'll be within one and for them that's their goal you know a six six half is great it was a great half but they now need to start either keeping it close or finding themselves a lead and they'll look to do so with this gun round ahead again the b site is actually kind of empty right now that's a really passive B-Site defense with three players up in heaven. So they're just going to go right onto the site. Artist times this one perfectly, and G2 just obliterated that B-Side defense play from NIP. They played too passively, gave up too much control to G2, and they said, oh, you're going to give us that site? Well, we'll happily take it. Thank you. A ninth round going to be going on the board for G2. As you can see, the remaining two members already looking to save. It's Ryman Hip. And there's already one putting out feelers, trying to hunt. It's the Rays. Unfortunate stuff here for NIP. Um, the repercussions of losing this round give so much space over to G2. It gives them 9-6. Then a potential pistol coming up ahead gives them a potential 10-6. This is not looking good. But fortunately for Rhyme, he'll find a couple of frags on his way out, which at least make it expensive. So now down to the 1v2, they'll push in, they'll try to tag team him together, but it's unfortunately quite a distance from the side of Pith, and switching to the classic, can't get the job done. Artist will finally take out Rhyme, and now NIP, they're going to start to struggle. They obviously forced up. They bought a lot of assault rifles in that previous round. They will not have the same type of economy, so they are going to do their little stack. Looks like four or... Close to, oh, they were about to, but still a little undecided. Four towards B, one towards A. Likely not having the weaponry to compete here. Um, going to be a difficult couple of rounds coming up ahead. I got. I feel like I got to come to your defense here. I, I, I may have thrown you under the bus there with the rank joke. But 
most people don't realize that there are casters who have covered major events for Counter-Strike, like CSGO majors that were Gold Nova and Silver ranked at the time. So rank doesn't mean much when it comes to what we do. We aren't playing the game for a reason. We're talking about it because we suck. <laughs> like, that's just the nature of the beast. If we were good, we'd be playing. That's why we're here. It's a five on three as the entry kills went their direction. Piff with an unexpected operator coming in here from G2, and it works out quite nicely for him as NIP don't really seem to have a solution. Obviously, the buy coming in from them with less than stellar. It's pistols working out here for I NIP. Exactly and uh, you can see who it's come down to. It's a rhyme right around the corner as the neural theft comes through. They all want to go for their hunt. Look how thirsty they are for these eco kills. My goodness. It's like a pub at this point as everyone's going on the hunt. Ten rounds now in the flawless victory comes through for G2. I appreciate you coming to my defense. I don't personally have chat open. I don't know what you guys are saying. Flame me all you want. I they were saying less. you're the best gold two caster yes. I've ever heard. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure, Bach. I'm sure. But um, listen, I don't have a lot of time to play. I started silver two, and in the low amount of games that I've played, I've already climbed to gold two. But as you may know, for those of you that have used the ranking system. There are players that have been Immortal 3 and have taken forever to get to Radiant. They'll play 20 plus games and still won't get into Radiant. So, ranking system, not blaming it, but I am climbing and I'm climbing slowly. So give me some time. I'm not saying I'll be Radiant, but I may get up there at some point. So, two rounds, in, uh, two kills already for the round. Uh, one kill for G2, of course, and NIP looking a little bit stronger on their gun round. So we'll see how that nets them maybe a win here. But Pith will even it out to the 3v3. And still G2 spike quite far behind. But they've got a lot of time to work with. We'll see if they end up finding some picks early. But Hip looking for whoever's on the opposite side of this screen wall. And it's just Pith with the operator. Going to probably double back for that spike. Down to just two now on the defense. Hip and the Cypher. Hip goes for the peak and the Leer ends up working out really well for him. The spike now moving back towards this A site. As the clock ticks down lower and lower, that wall just about to break. The Sage coming through. Does he time this right? Yes, he does. Hip continues to hold that line. Dismisses into that territory to go for a jiggle peek with the dismiss so he can't get shot in case there was an attempted trade coming out. Pit now on the operator in sight with 15 seconds left. Has to dedicate to the plant. The wall's been broken, so there's no safety from TV. You can see the push already comes through. The Cypher up in heaven currently using his cam to try and spy out the location of Pit, who's on the site and now revealed with a dart. And he's going to get spammed through exactly as you'd expect it to end. That round started out promising for G2, but it's turned around by NIP. Great work from them to bring things down to a two-on-one. A spike just taking forever to get onto that site. Yeah, just a just a friendly reminder uh, to chat that the scoreboard bug um, doesn't allow us to look at what the economy looks like for the second half. For some reason, uh, it's only the first half that the scoreboard works for right now. So if you're wondering what type of position G2 is in right now, I'm in the same boat. But based on the weapons that they've got in hand, it does look like they're able to buy up. Um, it looks like at the start of the round, they had 8,400 and... That's a lot of credits, so G2 definitely not sour when it comes to uh, the credits, but apologies for the scoreboard. I'm sure in the next patch coming out July 21st um, that they'll get it fixed and it'll all be sorted out. Firoth, here's the spam come through right around the corner, though. He's got Mixwell. We've seen Jets do this in the past. Dashing past quickly to get into that position. Mixwell... Going to be moving up further, decides to drop off that wall as it wasn't really offering much support to the team. They do lose one. It was over towards mid. Locker going to be backing off with the operator. And has a line of sight if they go for this jiggle peak. Slow orb going down to make that peak difficult. Wall going up as well. Like the look coming in from Locker as they were trying to get mailroom control and push in towards heaven, but it's not going to work out so well here. However, they do have a setup that would work nicely for an A pinch because they've got those players in mid. They can try and get on the other side of wow. heaven through ropes. And Hith was actually able to pick up a kill over there. So that's a bit of a problem right now for NIP. That was through the smoke as well, just great presence of mind to line up the crosshair and really just guesstimate where could that 
player B shoots through the smoke, nets himself a frag. It's now down to the 4v4. Only one ultimate available per team. It's the Showstopper and the Blade Storm, respectively. G2, they really want to be a part of this A side push. And Kriya waiting in the back corner. It's the Showstopper that'll just decimate them all. The explosion is too difficult for G2 to really push forward. Kriya will find one through the maps. David P will be successful, but does he have enough time to plant? Just barely. And now going to put himself up on a boost. One of the walls has already been broken or unfortunately just really weirdly placed. David P is kind of scratching his head. Swing around the corner. No way you win the duel against the op. And Nip, they're two rounds away from tying us up. It was on the spike. So you, you can't put the wall on the spike. That would be a little bit broken. So as it goes up, the wall breaks and that makes that play that much more difficult. Uh, I understand it was just a sense of urgency to put that wall up and get at least one quick kill before dropping back down into sight. Unfortunately, it didn't work out so well for him. The fact that he even got the spike plant out of that is actually kind of crazy because the round was looking really good for NIP. It shouldn't even have come down to it, but eight rounds now on the board for NIP. G2 having a hard time closing things out, but this is the nature of split. We've mentioned it already. An incredibly defense-sided map. The most defense-heavy map in the current rotation, despite the changes from Riot that have tried to alleviate that problem, it has gotten better, but it's still not necessarily close to maps like Haven, and even more specifically, Bind, which is currently the most even map in the current rotation, sitting around 51-49 in both esports play and casual play. You know, part of me feels like Split, excuse me, uh, specifically in this case, um, and moving forward in most cases, regardless of how the map feels, Haven feels a little attacker side at Split Ascent, uh, can go one way or the next. You've seen, even but right before your eyes, how in Europe, Ascent can feel defender-sided, and then when you and I go back to casting some NA matches, we see it be, be a little favor towards the attack. I think a big portion of it is based off of playstyle. You know, G2 started off on the defense, and they kept it even, 6-6. Six, six. Now that we're on attack, G2 is in the lead, and they're continuing that lead on a map that's defender-sided on the opposite I side. So I just think it's a playstyle differential between these two teams. Um, and when I speak of playstyle differential, I'm going to wait for that clip to go on Reddit as Artis eats a face full of showstopper of his own. And now it's G2 that have control of the A site. It's a three on three NIP. Like three on four, excuse me. The heal coming through as one was so close to death, it looked like they actually were dead. The shots over top of that box just can't quite connect. Putting the Sage down very close to that fatal point. And even with that, David P is still going to manage to drop out the opposing Sage. Piff picking off one as well. This retake's not working out so well at all for NIP. It's down to one and one only. And on the site, he will fall. Fear off. Couldn't get around that wall, a peculiar wall that came up that allowed him to survive that much longer. G2 finds their 11th, so finally they'll get themselves back on the scoreboard, just two away from closing out map three and taking things 2-1 in the series. So now for G2, they are looking good, keeping it close. We'll see if they're able to continue to keep it as close as they have been, 11-8, the scoreline, one round away from bringing us to match point on the side of NIP. Don't really look like they have the weaponry to play, so they may be looking towards a future round. And you'll notice on the eco, they're playing it a little bit closer. So Pip might find himself one, might find himself two. The shotgun not going to connect. Still looking for the next opportunity as he pushes back in. Firoth will find himself an upgrade. It's the Phantom with the bunny skin on the side. And now we'll see how this retake happens for NIP. The T Tech times it so nicely as they jump across, gonna line them up there with the rifle. It's down to just one left, and it's Rhyme. Not able to do much. NIP, their defense crumbles here yet again. It's 12 8. NIP can still force things to overtime. But it's going to be difficult. G2 has found their secret sauce, the magical solution to getting onto those sites and getting those spike plants. And NIP has struggled in the post plant to get back in. 
That said, there's still a chance. I don't want to count them out. As we see pretty heavy defense right now towards mid. Hip gets behind that box. Did he get there fast enough? That's the question. It, you can see they're kind of leaning in that direction. There's the bomb buddy to lead them in. Oh, the Leer comes out, but no, it gives away his position. As a result, it doesn't actually help. So now it's on the Cypher, who's over in this B site. He's trying to use the one way. Rhyme goes for the cam shot, and at that point, taken out. It's all up to Kriya, and there's a wall down in his path. It's looking like G2 is going to take things here. 2-1 over NIP and guarantee their pick in the semifinals on Sunday. And that's exactly what's going to, or on Saturday, excuse me, tomorrow. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Great game coming out from G2.